What if the very system meant to save the most powerful rocket ever built turned out to be its greatest weakness? What happens when the shield designed to protect humanity's bridge to other worlds shows cracks, literally? The question may sound dramatic, but the truth of Starship's Flight 10 makes it far more real than you might expect. SpaceX, the company that has redefined modern rocketry, dared to run an experiment that seemed almost reckless, deliberately weakening its own spacecraft in the hopes of making it stronger in the long run. But when Ship 37 plunged back toward Earth, the results were not as straightforward as anyone hoped. The story begins not with failure, but with confidence. Elon Musk himself, standing before an eager audience of engineers, enthusiasts, and critics alike, confirmed that Flight 10 would test Starship's heat shield in a way no other spacecraft had ever been tested. For decades, spacecraft re-entry was treated with a kind of religious caution. Heat shields were sacred. Engineers designed them to remain intact at all costs, because even the smallest failure meant disaster. But SpaceX, true to its reputation, decided to push the envelope. The plan was audacious. Remove some of the ceramic tiles, swap others with metallic ones, and even plaster over 50 new ones on the aft flaps where no one expected them to matter. The message was clear. Starship's armor was not just being worn, it was being challenged to its breaking point. And that's where the curiosity lies. Why would anyone intentionally weaken a spacecraft a machine worth billions and built for the future of humanity's interplanetary hopes? The answer is as much philosophical as it is technical. SpaceX is not building a spacecraft to fly once, twice, or ten times. They are building one that must survive hundreds, maybe thousands of flights, launching and landing as easily as a commercial plane. That means the heat shield cannot be delicate, cannot be fragile, cannot require weeks of repair. It has to shrug off damage the way a ship shrugs off sea spray. To test that, the engineers needed to know the limits, and to know the limits, they had to gamble. Flight 10 started like any other. The massive booster roared to life, 33 engines igniting with controlled violence that rattled the Gulf Coast and lit the sky. Millions of kilograms of thrust carried Ship 37 upward, a gleaming silver spear rising into the blue. The early milestones came quickly, Stage separation, fairings holding, orbit achieved. Then came the first sign of unease. At 9 minutes and 57 seconds into the flight, cameras caught something strange. The aft flaps, those giant fins that steer Starship like the wings of a bird in atmosphere, showed missing tiles. Somewhere in the climb, perhaps during the aerodynamic strain, they had simply shaken loose. It didn't look catastrophic, a few black squares missing from a mosaic of nearly 18,000 tiles. But in spaceflight, tiny details magnify into existential risks. And when re-entry came, that risk ignited. At 46 minutes and 59 seconds, a flash at the base of the ship betrayed the stress the heat shield was under. Tiles tumbled away into the plasma storm, torn off by forces beyond what they had been designed to handle. The rear of Starship, the most brutally punished section during re-entry, bored the scars. Cameras captured scorching, tearing, and streaks of glowing plasma wrapping around the flaps. But here's the twist. Despite the violence, despite the cracks, the ship survived. Data showed the tiles that remained absorbed temperatures climbing to 1400 degrees Celsius, levels high enough to melt most metals. And beneath the chaos, the steel hull endured. The backup thermal protection systems, the hidden layers no one had seen before, held the line. For all its apparent fragility, Starship did not burn up. It fought its way down through the atmosphere and remained intact long after many thought it would fail. This paradox raises the question, was it a failure or was it a success? The test revealed weaknesses, yes. Tiles missing reinforcement, adhesives perhaps insufficient, areas still unfit for routine reuse. Yet it also proved resilience. Even stripped of its armor in places, Starship did not die. For engineers, that is priceless data, the difference between designing for perfection and designing for reality. Still, Flight 10 had one last surprise in store. As Starship descended toward its ocean splashdown, cameras tracked a bizarre transformation. The spacecraft's belly, normally black from its ceramic armor,
glowed with an otherworldly orange hue. At first glance, it looked like something alien, as if the ship were turning molten before our eyes. Questions swirled instantly. Were the tiles disintegrating? Had plasma burned through to the steel beneath? Or was this the final moment of failure? A warning flare that the design could not be trusted. The explanation, though less catastrophic, was no less fascinating. Ceramic heat shield tiles are designed to absorb heat, not release it. They act like a sponge for energy, trapping thermal radiation within their molecular structure instead of allowing it to penetrate. That means when they reach their thermal limits, they don't instantly cool off, they glow. Just as metal glows when heated in a forge, so too did Starship's belly tiles, radiating the fire they had captured. It was not destruction, it was survival in its most extreme form. Yet survival did not last long. At 1 hour, 6 minutes and 27 seconds, just moments before splashdown, Starship remained intact. Its underside still lit with that strange orange aura. But the ocean would not be its resting place. As planned, the flight termination system detonated the ship the instant it touched the water. The data had been gathered, the experiment completed. Recovery was never part of the plan. And here, in this moment, lies the real philosophical debate. SpaceX now has evidence that their ceramic tiles can endure, but they also know those same tiles are fragile, expensive, and slow to replace. Is this the future they want? A spacecraft covered in 18,000 black squares, each one a potential weak point? Or is it merely a stepping stone towards something stronger, perhaps a metallic shield that can be reused instantly, polished rather than repaired? Elon Musk himself hinted at the answer when he spoke of a future cadence. Dozens of Starship launches per day, every day. Such a vision cannot coexist with fragile armor. It requires durability that has yet to be proven. And yet, despite every setback, Flight 10 gave SpaceX something historic. The first ever controlled vertical splashdown of Starship's upper stage. No rocket in history had attempted, let alone achieved, such a maneuver. It was not simply a test, it was a statement a signal that Starship was no longer just a prototype fumbling toward orbit. It was becoming what Musk promised, a machine capable of carrying satellites, cargo, and one day, humans, across the void. For NASA, the timing could not have been better. When acting administrator Sean Duffy issued his congratulations, he framed Flight 10 not as a test for SpaceX, but as a milestone for humanity. Artemis III, the mission destined to return astronauts to the lunar surface for the first time in over 50 years, depends on Starship. Each test brings that reality closer, and each success is a step toward a new era. But even as officials celebrated, others saw the shadows of bigger questions. Can this heat shield be trusted when human lives depend on it? Can orbital refueling, a technology never before attempted at scale, be mastered in time? And perhaps the biggest question of all, can a single company, no matter how bold, truly carry humanity to Mars in less than a decade? These questions hang heavy, not as doubts, but as provocations. The glow of Starship's orange belly, the cracks in its flaps, the roar of its engines, all of it speaks to a future that feels both inevitable and uncertain. Flight 10 was not an ending, it was a beginning, a glimpse of what's possible when engineers gamble with fire and dare to push through the plasma storm. But what comes next, after this daring experiment, may determine not just the fate of Starship, but the timeline of humanity's leap beyond Earth. And that is where the story turns toward its next chapter, one that promises even greater risks, even greater stakes, and a kind of breakthroughs that could decide whether humanity's first footsteps on Mars are decades away or just around the corner. The controlled splashdown of Ship 37 was not the end of a flight test. It was the start of a conversation. A conversation that asks not just how we build rockets, but how we build the future. SpaceX has proven that Starship can roar into orbit, survive the inferno of re-entry, and descend under control. Yet the experiment with its heat shield exposed the fragility of the very technology designed to protect it. And so while many celebrated, others leaned forward in their chairs, asking the harder questions. If a spacecraft struggles with something as fundamental as armor, can it truly shoulder the dream of carrying humans to the moon, to Mars, and beyond? SpaceX itself seems to thrive on those very questions. For Elon Musk, every failure is a clue, every weakness a doorway to discovery. After Flight 10, he was quick to emphasize not what went wrong, but what went right, the data, the resilience, the milestones. But the deeper truth is that the future of Starship does not rest on one success. It rests on iteration, on a relentless cycle of testing, breaking, 
fixing, and flying again. That's why even as Ship 37's wreckage sank beneath the Indian Ocean, Ship 38 was already being fitted with its aft flaps inside Mega Bay 2. The cadence is not symbolic, it's necessary. For SpaceX to meet its own deadlines, it cannot wait years between breakthroughs. Each test must feed into the next, until flaws shrink and capabilities expand. The larger goal looms like a shadow across every milestone, Artemis 3. For the first time since Apollo, astronauts will set foot on the moon, and they will do so aboard a modified starship. NASA has placed its bet, and in doing so, tethered America's space program to SpaceX's success. Flight 10 gave them reasons to believe. A vehicle that can climb to orbit, restart engines in space, deploy payloads, and then descend intact, even with missing tiles, is closer to lunar readiness than many skeptics dared to admit. And so amid the plasma storms and orange glows, the dream of Artemis glimmers brighter. But NASA's moon is only the beginning. Musk speaks often of Mars, and not in poetic terms. His timelines, as ambitious as they sound, are delivered with the precision of a man who refuses to treat dreams as abstractions. By 2028 or 2029, he says, the first starships will attempt to reach the red planet. It will not be a ceremonial mission. It will be a construction job. The plan is simple in outline and staggering in ambition. Deliver infrastructure. Think of it. The first spacecraft to touch Martian soil will not be carrying colonists, but cargo, supplies, fuel-making equipment, habitats, the foundation stones of a settlement that will one day grow into a city. And alongside those steel machines will walk, if one can use the word, Tesla's humanoid robot Optimus. Designed to perform heavy lifting, to operate tools, to handle the mundane but brutal labor of early Martian life, Optimus represents a radical shift. Not just machines building rockets, but machines building civilization. For centuries, humanity has imagined the first footprints on Mars. Few imagined they might belong to robots. Yet that is exactly the scenario SpaceX envisions. A scenario that blends human ambition with robotic persistence. By 2030 to 2031, the vision grows bolder. Starships will carry more cargo, not just infrastructure, but the machinery to search for resources. To mine ice for water, to crack that water into hydrogen and oxygen for fuel. The goal is not merely to survive on Mars, but to thrive to build the capacity to refuel and return. Musk calls it in situ resource utilization, a sterile term for something profound. If Starship can make its own fuel on Mars, then humanity will no longer be tethered to Earth. We will have the first outpost of a self-sustaining species, a civilization that can leap from world to world, fueled by the resources of the cosmos itself. The timeline stretches further still. By 2033, starships are envisioned to carry twice as much cargo, forming the backbone of a supply chain across millions of kilometers of space. What begins as a fragile base may, within decades, become a city under a foreign sky. And it all begins with the data gathered by a ship that glowed orange in Earth's atmosphere and exploded in Earth's oceans. But if this sounds inevitable, it is worth remembering just how fragile it all is. Starship, for all its grandeur, has not yet even reached full orbital operations. Flight 10 was a triumph, but three flights before it ended in failure. The heat shield remains a puzzle unsolved. Orbital refueling, the second great challenge Musk identifies, has not yet been demonstrated at scale. In fact, no one in human history has successfully transferred the volumes of cryogenic fuel Starship will require in orbit. And without that capability, the dream of Mars is impossible. So, the future rests on twin pillars. Heat shield durability and orbital refueling. Each as daunting as the other. One protects the ship from burning alive on descent. The other ensures it has enough fuel to leave Earth in the first place. Both must be solved before the grand vision can unfold. And yet, Musk remains unshakable in his optimism. 
He describes his team as others see setbacks, he sees progress written in fire and smoke. But perhaps the deeper question is not whether SpaceX can do it, but why they must. Why push so hard for Mars? Why gamble with billions of dollars, thousands of jobs, and countless risks for a dream that may take generations to realize? The answer Musk gives is stark. For humanity to survive, it must become multiplanetary. Earth is beautiful, but fragile. A single asteroid, a single supervolcano, a single war could erase everything we've built. To place all of human destiny on one planet is to play a game with odds too terrible to accept. Mars is not just a goal, it is a lifeboat. And so every test, every failure, every glowing tile is a step toward building that lifeboat. When Ship 37 plunged through plasma and erupted above the ocean, it carried with it the weight of that vision. The engineers watching knew that each missing tile, each scorched flap, each vibration and flare was more than data. It was a question written in fire. How much are we willing to risk to give humanity a chance at forever? For the dreamers, the answer is everything. For the skeptics, the doubts remain. But doubt does not stop rockets from flying. And as Ship 38 waits in the mega bay, as the launch tower arms prepare to catch yet another booster, the cycle begins again. Test by test, flame by flame, SpaceX inches closer to turning the improbable into the inevitable. The story of Flight 10 is not one of perfection. It is a story of imperfection embraced, of flaws revealed so that they may be conquered. It is a story of a spacecraft that survived when it should not have, of tiles that glowed like embers and steel that held like armor. It is a story that asks us to look beyond the smoke and fire and see the horizon it points toward, a horizon that glimmers not in Earth's skies, but in the pale red dust of another world. And so, as we close this chapter of Starship's saga, we are left with questions that linger longer than any flight. What will it take to make the heat shield unbreakable? How soon will orbital refueling turn from theory into practice? And most of all, when will we see the first starship descend through the thin Martian air, glowing orange not with failure, but with triumph? The answers will come, as they always do, in the roar of engines and the silence after splashdowns. But one thing is already certain. SpaceX has lit a fire that will not be extinguished. A fire that burns in steel, in plasma, and in the imaginations of all who dare to believe. And now, it's your turn. If the story of Starship's fiery trials and unstoppable progress has captured your mind, share it, spread it, join the conversation, like, subscribe, and let others know that humanity's greatest journey is not science fiction. It is unfolding before our eyes.